my man? How you been? Man, I've been chilling, yo. What's going on with you, though? Nothing much, man. I'm out here in Orlando trying to make it happen. You know? I, 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 I see you shining. Ray Charles can see yeah, you shining. Man. I see you shining, nigga. Sunny in the building. What's going on, my G? Long time no hear from, man. Well, I tell you, man, can't complain because uh, God bless me with the opportunity, you know, to serve the community. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I recently opened this um, restaurant, Caribbean restaurant, out of Orlando, Florida. You know, um, it's just been a blessing, you know? Can't All right. complain. All right, so go ahead and uh, introduce yourself, brother man, and let the people know who you are and where you came from. All right, all right. First of all, uh, my name is Absent Jean Lewis. Um, living here in Orlando, Florida. Um, I've tried many different things. You know, I've, I, I come. I actually came from the restaurant industry. I've done the restaurant for sixteen years. I've tried different things. I, I, I met Moshan in the trucking industry. Apparently, the trucking was not for me, but, you know, a lot of respect for these guys driving out there. LaShawn, shout out to you, my brother. You keep it real out there. You know, I, I came back. I came back to Orlando and um, went back to the restaurant industry. Uh, and then here we are, five years later, um, had a chance, the opportunity. I was blessed enough to open one on my own uh, where we um, opened to the community. Uh, it's a Caribbean restaurant where... You know, we sell all good stuff, all good products. If you ever taste the Caribbean product, you know we have some good stuff, some 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 good tender meat, I, some island. good tender. You know, yes, it, it's called the name of the restaurant called Island Taste Bistro Hoka Lounge. All right. Also, it's also a hoka lounge. You know, um, where people come in and you know have a good time, you know, sit down and drink do hoka. You know, um, we we have uh, pretty much a lot of things going on here. Uh, for, uh, most important for most uh, is, is the fact that we're able to, you know, feed people. You know, people come in hungry and then leave with the belly full and, and happy, you know, in a very clean atmosphere. You know, and it's just a privilege for me to be in the uh, lockout show this morning or uh, this afternoon to share, you know, with the people actually what we have going on here. All and right. thank you, Lashon, for having me. You're very welcome, man. Thank you for coming on, man. So let's, uh, let's rewind it back. Five years, man, or, well, six, five, whatever. Let's rewind it back, man. So at the at, at the time, your your interest was in trucking. What what brought you to uh, what brought you to trucking? Well, honestly, a friend of mine, a good friend of mine was working in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, I had to see him for a while. And then, uh, I happened to meet his wife in the store where... I asked for him, and the wife told me that he actually was driving the truck. And when I reached out to him, and I asked him, what's going on? Uh, what's going on in the truck? And is it for me? How is it going? And he told me, yeah, the trucking has a, it's a lot of um, opportunity out there to make a uh, pretty decent living. You know, and then I wanted to try something different, you know, because at the time I had been in the restaurant for uh, 16 years, like I said. And, you know, and I thought it was the time for me to you know, went out and tried something else, you know, and then I went to school and paid a lot of money for that license. And um, and then I went over the road and always remember, you know, I, I, I don't regret it, uh, even though it didn't work out for me the way that I expected it, but I didn't, I didn't regret it. Well, you got you 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 got your license. Where where did you go to get your license? You you went to school, paid the money. Where, where did you go to school at? I went to a school called Roadmaster. Mm -hmm. Roadmaster uh, is uh, is uh, if you know Werner Werner Company Werner Enterprise, mm -hmm. it's one of the biggest trucking um, enterprise. They also own Roadmaster School out here in Orlando, Florida. Um, so yeah, uh, that's where my friend has referred me to go to. I went there and paid pretty good money to get that license. You know, they train you, they give you the license, and then um, you know, go on the road and until you pass the test and um, you know certify as a trucker. You know, let, I did. I did it all. You know. Let me ask you. Let me ask your opinion, right quick. In your opinion, man, do you think uh, because Warner, you know, will pay for you know will pay for your license too, if you was to come up in there and give them about a year, you know, year driving. But the difference between paying and having a company pay for you, 
Uh, do you think there's a difference in training with that? Like you, you actually paid money. So you, do you felt the money that you paid that you that you felt that you got adequate training versus uh, getting you know letting the company pay for it? Honestly, I I, I think I think um, I had uh, adequate training because before I went with uh, with U.S. Express after I left Warner with my license. I went with U.S. Express, and U.S. Express put me on the road with another trainer. And it's not like when I came out of World, uh, World Master School, I went straight on the road by myself. No, I had uh, I was assigned with a trainer for a month before I could actually uh, do the test and again to be on the road by myself. I feel like I I had enough training. Okay. It's just um, you know after spending two months on the road, I feel like I, I was overwhelmed and missed my family, and then. Um, uh, that's, that's that's one of the reasons I didn't push to to continue to come back home. All right. So so after after you left uh, Roadmasters, of course we met up at U.S. Express. Uh, Correct. We uh, <laughs> uh <laughs> it's a funny story behind that. Um, it is. So you. Okay, so me and you, you know, we linked up. We did everything that U.S. Express uh, required of us. Then it came time to drive to to do the to do the test or the the driving test. The old guy uh, at the time, John. I, I remember his name. His name is Johnny. His name John. Johnny. Remember yeah, that yeah. was his name, Johnny. Yeah. Okay. So you went out first. Um. Uh, what happened? Well, actually, you went out. I think you went out first. I, oh, went I went out, out first. first. Oh, wait, wait. Are you sure? Are you yeah. sure I went out first? I thought yeah. you went out first. Yeah. yeah. No, you went out first. You oh. went out first. I remember you were, you were, you were, you were kind of struggling to get the truck in. Right. You know, and then we were like, okay, we talked to John. We said, come on, man. He got it. He didn't, you know, and he thought you hit one of the cones, which you, you didn't. You, you barely touched it. But, um, okay, okay, um, okay. So I did, okay. So I went out first. I got um, yeah. I was yeah. I, I was struggling. I was struggling hard with my back end at the time. Everything else was everything else was cool, but uh, the back end. I, I was struggling hard because we had to. I think we had to do a forty-five. We had to do a ninety, a forty-five, and a blind side. Uh, I think I turned my 45. I think the 90 I was good with. I think I turned my 45 into a 90 to get it in there. And the blind side was, it was okay, but I still managed to get it in there. I was, like, struggling a lot. Uh, at one point, uh, the other guy, the the other uh, uh, instructor, he was a he was an asshole. He was like, "Well, if that was me, I wouldn't have passed you." Yada yada yeah. yada. And all I like remember that. that. But um, but uh, John, uh, you know, John went on ahead and went on ahead and passed me. Now you, yeah, yeah, went out. What happened? I went out, and honestly, I think for some reason, John. You know what? Um, when I went out, uh, I, I did everything right the way that I supposed to. Mm -hmm. You know how some, uh, some road, when you're going to come to a stop sign, it warns you first. There's a little sign that shows you there's going to be a stop sign up ahead. Right. So I mentioned that to John. I didn't stop because it's not a stop sign. It warns you that you will come up to a stop sign. Right. You know, and then when I get to the stop sign, I stop. Uh, okay. For some reason, he 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 took that against me. He took that against me, and for some reason, John was going to pass me the next day because he wanted me to actually retake the test. Mm -hmm. But me, I felt like um, you know what, I've I've been through it, and I felt like it was time for me to go. And when he he told me to go to the hotel and to come back the next day. To actually retake the test, and I was very pissed. And I told him, you know, this is BS. And you know what? And at that point, he was mad, and he said, 
you know what, um, I'm going to go home. And you know what, at that point, that's, that's where my mind was, that my mind was, that's how you want to get all right, so yeah. Hey, are you are you talking to me on a on a speaker or on your regular phone? No, I'm, I'm on the regular phone. Oh, regular okay, phone. okay. So you okay? It's not, it's not like you're underwater. That's all. All right, so no. man, so wow, and we 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 came back together, and I was surprised that he actually got mad and said for you to go home. Like I I was like, yo, it. Is you gonna give him another opportunity? Because I think, you know, I I think what it was was just miscommunication between the two of y'all, right? Yes, yes, oh, yes. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, um, the, the miscommunication uh, between me and John—that's what you mean, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I at that time I thought it was just miscommunication between uh, y'all two. I'm sure if you would have, I'm sure if you would have came back. You would have you would have went on here and knocked that out out of the ballpark. Yeah, I I would I I would definitely have because he really, I didn't feel like it was um, important for me to uh, go to the hotel and spend another night and come back the next day. Mm -hmm. I feel like if anything was to be done, it could have been done. Yeah. So you uh so after that you you just decided that trucking wasn't for you but do you still got your cdls do you do you still have them no i let it go i let it go because uh in order for me to have kept it i would need to uh do the uh, physical every year pay uh, 110 dollars i kept it for one year and then after that um i returned it you know uh, because i didn't i didn't see myself going back on the road my wife was like you know, um, I I should try to do something else. You know, mm -hmm. and then, yeah, I'm gonna go a year later. All right, so you so you you agree that trucking isn't for everyone, right? Absolutely not. Trucking is not for everybody. You know, and then I have people that reach out to me and ask me. Uh, I have young folks at my church that ask me, "What do I think about trucking?" And I tell them the honest. I tell them it's not for everyone, and make sure if you if you're married or if you have a girlfriend that you're in a serious relationship with, make sure you both agree that okay, truck and you're gonna go and they're gonna support you because if you're in it by yourself, it, it can be very devastated because you can come back home and home is destroyed. You're no longer welcome at home. Mm -hmm. So I tell I tell my friend whoever asked me, uh, give them my honest opinion. Uh, to begin with, my wife was not with the idea. She didn't like the idea of me going away, going on the road. But I did it anyway because I thought that was a better opportunity to make more money. Mm -hmm. And in the long run, I realized it's not just about the money. It's, it's, it's the happiness. If, if, if your partner is not in it with you, you shouldn't go. Gotcha. All right. So so down the line, you came back. You did a you know little bit of stuff here, a little bit of stuff there. Uh, you got back into the uh, into the uh, restaurant industry. Uh, you know, built yourself up. How how did how when did it when when did it come to you to go ahead and uh, start your own restaurant business? And what what was the route that you took to get there? You know, uh, my experience, my background is from the restaurant. When I moved to this country, this is where I started. Uh, uh, back in 2000, I started with Burger King as a as a an employee, making six dollars per hour. You know, I've been 13 years working with them. The last eight of them as a general manager. And when I left Burger King, I went to Wendy's, uh, did three years, and then in between uh, Burger King and Wendy's, I did uh, Pizzeria Uno as a, as an employee cooking. So I have all the skills. I have the skills of cooking, and I have the skills of of managing, and I have the skills of customer care. And in the business, in the restaurant business, it's, it's your service is number one. If you know how to serve your customers, and if you, if you can serve them in, 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 a, in a nice way, uh, clean environment, you can you can be successful in it. And I've always knew that if I had the, the mean as far as financial, I could always run a restaurant on my own. I mean, I, I've got what it takes, and, and seriously. I've always been looking for an opportunity to see if I can invest into a franchise, but it costs so much to invest into a franchise, but then it came down to me and a partner, you know, uh, putting together and see if we can uh, build this. And we, we came through, and then thank God, 
Now we have it. It's, it's right here in Orlando, Florida. Uh, again, the name is Island Space Bistro Hookah Lounge. You know where we serve the best Caribbean food ever. You know, and um, yeah, it was, that's the route that I took, and then and, and that's the experience that I've got that that put it together. And then you know, right now it's, it's ours. You know, when you came when you came to this country, uh, was Florida? Uh, that's that's where you that's where you held at in Florida. But was you was yeah. you living was you living anywhere else when you came out to you know to do the trucking thing or was it Florida? It's always been Florida. That's where I've been uh, for 22 years. I've been in the state for 22 years. I've been in the country for 22 years. I've always been in Florida. I've visited different places, but uh, my resident uh, resident has always been Florida. Oh, okay. You know? All right, so what what made you leave the Caribbean, bro? Well, uh, the, the the USA is the land of the free. That's what I know, and that's 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 everybody's dream to see uh, if if the opportunity will present to come to the USA. And which it came for me. It's the land of the free, man. It's just, it's just, that's what they said, and then so far, thank God, and I've seen it. It's a uh, it's a better life, better opportunity, you know. And the Caribbean is nice. Don't get me wrong. The Caribbean is nice. It's, it's, it's limited in opportunity, but it's very nice. I've, it's always a pleasure to go back to you know see family and have some fun. You know, but um, the U.S. is where you know you can actually uh, uh, make your dream can come true quicker than anywhere else. So um, I've been blessed to be part of, of this dream. Now I can call myself a, a, a you know second citizen. I'm a, an American, a Haitian American, mm-hmm. and uh, it's, it's been it's been a blessing for me. You know. Well, Joe, now you say you now are you, you're married or or you 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 just have a girlfriend? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yo, your wife. No, I, she, I'm married she, ten years. She she came with you from the Caribbean, or or you found yourself an American wife? Yeah, uh, she no, she she was there before me. She's Haitian as well, but she was there before me. Oh, okay. Um, so I met her here, but we both yeah from Haiti originally, you oh. know, and we married ten years marriage, uh, three three kids, you know. Okay, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. Well, Sonny, man, it, it's it's been a it's been a pleasure, you know, you know, going back down memory lane. I'm glad everything working out for you and all like that. Much success to you for your restaurant. Go ahead and shout out your restaurant, bro. Hey, listen, uh, it's Island Fish Bistro Hookah Lounge. If you are in uh, in the area, Orlando, Florida, if you ever in this area, check it out. The Island Tis Bistro Hookah Lounge. We have the best Caribbean food. We have the best people prepping it. We have the best chef. Hey, listen, I can't wait for you to visit. And LaShawn, listen, if you ever in this area, man, you get your first plate on the house, man. You ain't paid for that. Whatever you pick, man. Hey, LaShawn, I appreciate the fact that you give me the opportunity to be on the show today, man. Thank you. It's been you. a blessing knowing you, man. Hey, listen, man, you keep doing what you do, man, and be safe out there, man. I will, bro. You take it easy, man, and much success to you, Sonny, man. Uh, like I said, I'll, I'll still, you know, I'm still following you on Facebook and everything. You're looking good, bro. You're looking good. I hey, see, I, I I see them guns coming in. <laughs> you know, with the age come wisdom, you know, we have to do whatever we can to stay in shape, you know? Exactly, exactly. So that's what's up, man. Well, thank you for coming on to the show, man. You have a blessed one, and I'll holler back at you in a, in a little bit. Anytime, my brother. Anytime. Be there, man. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. All right, one.